my name is Krista Ocheng, and I um, am currently a full-time mother. I have three small children. They are five, three, and one year old, and they keep me very busy. <laughs> and I've been given the title, uh, um, I am an overcomer. There's a phrase that's come out in recent years that I really appreciate. Maybe you know it. It's okay to not be okay. And as someone who suffers with mental health, I think it's really valuable that society's finally acknowledging it rather than keeping it shrouded in shame. I've carried a heavy sadness as long as I can remember. I grew up with a wonderful mother who was and is incredibly resourceful and sacrificial, and she raised four children all on her own, and I was the oldest. Unfortunately, different people came into our lives and took advantage of the situation, and our lives became shadowed with a lot of abuse and a lot of instability. And that deeply impacted me as a child and as a young person. I vividly remember being seven years old and watching a children's program, and I started to cry because the children in the program were so happy. And I felt like, I'm never going to be that happy. It's too late for me. And that, that memory still impacts me because I was so young and I was so clear. And I think about my daughter who's five years old. I just became a protector. No one gave me that role. I gave it to myself. I felt like I had to protect myself, my mom, my siblings. And so I would hide emotionally. I would hide the anger, the confusion, the sadness, and the shame. I would hide and pretend to be happy and pretend to be okay. But it was just to cover how sad and how hopeless I felt about my life. And that way of coping followed me into adulthood and into my spiritual life as well. I was very young when I became a Christian. I was 18 years old. And when I made that decision, I had the unrealistic expectation that now I was always going to be happy. Life is always going to be good. It's just blue skies and rainbows from 18 until hopefully I live into my 80s. I was sure. So when that sadness returned a few months after I was baptized, I was shocked. I thought, this isn't supposed to happen to me. I'm a Christian now. I'm saved. Jesus is Lord. I pray. But I was so sad. And I couldn't figure out why. I still didn't even know I was depressed. I just thought either there was something wrong with me or everyone else feels this way too. And just as I'd kept my feelings to myself as a teenager, I did the same thing now as a believer. And it would be years before I reached out for help. And I didn't hide my depression with the intention of lying or being deceitful. You know, that was never in my mind. That was just how I survived my entire life until then. I masked it because I was scared. I was scared that something was wrong with me. I was scared of being found out, even though there was nothing to hide. I was scared because of the way that society has this huge stigma on mental illness and the way that I saw myself and the things that I believed about it, I was sure that I would be rejected if people knew who I really was, if they knew how bad I was, if they knew the thoughts of deep sadness and desperation and darkness that I had, they wouldn't love me, they wouldn't believe in me. I was scared of being labeled as mentally ill I was afraid that my friends or my family wouldn't believe I was depressed and they wouldn't believe the extent that it truly plagued me at times. And eventually that burden of my sadness, my mental health, it became too much to bear. In 2012, I was already struggling in life for a bunch of different reasons. And late that year, I was robbed at gunpoint. And that still remains the scariest thing that has happened to me thus far. And I just went into a really deep depression. And I developed crippling anxiety that can still 
affect me until now, right? If it's four o'clock in December, I'm not going out. It's dark, like, too bad, because I'm scared. I get heart palpitations. I get anxiety walking home alone, and um, it's something I still have to, to, to take captive of and pray through and talk about. But at that time, in 2012, I was not okay. I needed help. And that help, it, it didn't come immediate. It was sort of waves over the next few years. Um, I had different spiritual mentors in my life that were so valuable. And I had antidepressants and therapy. And those aren't for everyone, but they were definitely for me. And I was eventually able to start putting together the pieces of my life and sort of defrost my, my heart and my brain and deal with things. But in reaching out for help, I was forced to face some of my fears. I was diagnosed by more than two or three doctors with depression and anxiety, which by definition is a mentally illness, it's mental illness. So now I have this label on me that I was always afraid of. And it was indeed difficult for friends and family to accept or even believe that I had depression. Or they want, somehow it must be my fault somehow. I must have done something wrong somehow for this to happen because they'd known me for so many years to be a certain way. And it can still be difficult to, for people to understand, and that's okay. It's okay to not be okay. But, there's a but, it's not okay to give up. It's not okay to lose hope. Whatever that means for you, that means different things to all of us. I mean, for me, I've had days and weeks and months even so dark where I felt like I don't want to live anymore. This is too hard. It's too heavy. It's too sad. My family, my friends, they will be happier without me. I just bring this cloud of doom and gloom wherever I go, and, and I don't want to be that way, but it, it's so hard. And this is as a Christian. I have those thoughts. I have those days. And I don't want anyone to suffer in silence, as I had for so long. Not giving up doesn't mean there won't be dark days. There will be plenty of dark days in all of our lives. It just means there's hope for another day. And if I was to tell you that because I'm a Christian and I pray and I fast and I do the right things and I read my Bible, that my mental health has miraculously you know, improved and gone away and gotten better, I would be lying to all of you and to myself, and to God. I still struggle quite periodically and profoundly. But I believe God gave this to me. I believe it's a blessing in disguise as I kind of understand it more. And I'll tell you why. In Romans 5, verses 3 to 5, the Bible says, Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame. My journey and victory and overcoming isn't in wishing it away or denying that it's there. It's been in accepting that it's okay to not be okay. And the reason why that is okay is because I have hope. Hope in Jesus, hope in the word, hope in eternal life. And to overcome, we have to be aware and be honest and accept, accept health, help, accept the challenges, the highs and the lows of life. And I don't know about you, but I'm so shocked when life is hard sometimes. <laughs> this isn't supposed to be hard. I've gone through enough in my, my long 36 years. It should be easy now. But it's okay to suffer. And I want to glory in my suffering because there is glory in suffering. My mental health struggles have made me who I am. Of course, there is a, a dark and difficult side to it but it's made me more compassionate, resourceful, more aware of other people and their challenges, more empathetic, a better friend. Christian or not, we're all going to suffer in this life. That suffering just changes its face, but it's okay because suffering serves a purpose. For me, it's building my character, it's teaching me to persevere, it's helping me to overcome, 
It's okay because there is hope. We can all overcome by allowing our suffering to serve its purpose in our lives. May we all glory in our sufferings. Thank you. I love you. Thank you.